the fastest paw in the West. Western fables have hard-fisted heroes, men with brave blood in their veins. Now you take the story of Poncho. Never heard that one? Well, first off, Poncho wasn't hard-fisted. He was hard fanged. You see, Poncho was a dog. A dog of the West Texas Plains. This tale was first told in the year 1880. And this is the way it remains. There once was a runaway orphan. This boy now, name of Manuel, was hightailing it across the panhandle from a place where they had worked him long and fed him short. He only had one friend in the world, and that was Poncho. A dog of the West Texas Plains. Moving each day to a new destination where they could hide for the night. Choosing the roads far from civilization, trying to keep out of sight. Then one day a peddler with wagon of trade goods, ten pants to pocket watch chain, came up unexpected and sudden. Now Sam Larrabee looked kind of easy going and slow, but he had a mighty quick eye and a gun to back it up. Right now, that was good, because otherwise he'd have never met Poncho. A dog of the West Texas Plains. All right, come out of there with your hands up. What are you two doing out here all alone 50 miles from nowhere? Nothing, senor. You run away from home? What about your mama and papa? I don't have any. Only Pancho. Pancho, eh? Well, what do they call you? Manuel. Well, there ain't much market for runaway kids and dogs, but... On the other hand, I can't just leave you out here to fry. Get in. I'll think of something before we get to the next settlement. So that's the way it all rightly began. And as the old wagon rambled on, Sam and Manuel started getting acquainted. Pancho was kind of hoping they'd notice that he was still down there hot-footed while everybody else was riding. Sam was about as talkative as setting bull, but his heart was as big as his bedroll just the same. His rickety outfit wasn't much to look at, but pots and pans, groceries and tools were mighty scarce and mighty valuable on the frontier. To reach his customers, Sam followed a long and seldom road. And in those days, if you couldn't take care of yourself, like as not, there'd be some bushwhacker waiting for you who thought he could. Evenings on the trail got to follow in a kind of pattern. While Sam rustled up some grub and turned the horses out to graze, the fast gun and the sheriff usually had time for a little shootout. Gunfighting's all right, as long as there isn't anything better to do, like eating. Manuel, round up patches for me. I turn them loose for a while to graze. Yeah, I get them. Pancho, I'll try it. 
Nothing in this world any more delicious when they're flavored with the scent of juniper and pine on the desert air. Especially when you're hungry enough to eat the heel off a boot. All right, you win. But no complaints about the cooking. went after Sam's team. He was as quiet as a snake in a hen house, but he hadn't counted on Poncho. place too, if Patches could just make it up this last hill. <laughs> Sam's hideout was an old coal mine. It had fired up some of the first iron horses along the Santa Fe Trail, but it was long since deserted. They'd have to get the wagon down that hill fast. Sam rigged a jerk line to the wagon tongue so they could coast down and steer. He hoped. All right, Manuel, you're going to have to work the rope on your side. Like this? That's right, i got to stay on this side and work the brake. Let's give it a try. Pull. Now slack off and let me pull. Thank <laughs> you. 
but it wasn't long before she started getting a bit in her teeth. didn't see what all the fuss was about. He'd enjoyed the ride and was kind of hoping they might go again. One thing at least, they sure hadn't wasted any time getting down that hill. Well, it's hard to believe, but it looks like everything is still in one piece. Let's see. There used to be a water hole around here somewhere. Patches anywhere. Well, maybe Pancho can find you. Here, Pancho. Go find Patches. Bring him back here. Ayale, a lot of toil. Go. <laughs> well, we better get busy. We can't just leave that wagon out in the open like that. I sure hope Pancho can find that horse. By now, Patches had wandered off into some pretty wild country and right into the private hunting ground of one of the local dry gulches. Now, like all big cats, the cougar knew he was only good for a short burst of speed. So he figured to get as close to that pinto as he could before he charged. Misjudged by about a step and a half. Of course, Patches didn't know that, and he was set to keep right on going, till sundown at least. Meantime, Sam and Manuel were doing their best to hide the old wagon under the mine. Pancho was breezing along after Patches just like he'd been told to. Kelso figured it was about time to come back and get the wagon, but he found it gone. The wheels had left an easy trail, though, and anyway, he was the kind of horse thief who could track bees through a blizzard. Manuel knew they were in big trouble, and he was doing his best to help. So he'd made himself a gunfighter. It looked more like a possum with the epizooty, but he'd loaded both barrels of the old hammer action scatter gun for real and tied strings to the triggers. So if the dummy got shot at, it'd shoot back. (laughs) 
Sam knew a stuffed galoot like that hanging out the window would be a dead giveaway. Say, Manuel, uh, why don't you get a sack of corn out of the wagon and cut it open? Patches is going to need a good feed before we start out. This is, I do it. just made an excuse to get the boy out of the shack so he could move the dummy out of sight. But then he stopped for another look. Back in the shadows, old dead eye didn't look so bad. Well, they needed all the help they could get, so Sam hooked the strings up the way Manuel had had them in the first place. on his own. And again, he might not. Looks like we're going to have to do some walking. Do you think Calf will find a wagon? Probably. Aren't you and I going to stay here and take care of things? No, I wouldn't want that. Besides, you're going to have to help me with the horses. I think he could stay here by himself. You really think he'd stay here alone? Sure he will, if I tell him to. Well, it's worth a try. I'll go round up some grub. Pancho, wait on me. You're going to have to stay here, all alone, and take care of that wagon. And if council comes, you find him good, see? We'll be gone an awful long time, but don't you leave this wagon. Not for anything in the world. He won't stay now. And guard the wagon. I told him. Well, the sooner we get started, the sooner we get back. Adios, Pancho. Right after Pancho was given his order, his two friends moseyed away. The poor dog, he wished he could follow. No, Pancho. You have to stay. Remember what I told you? Stay. But it was his duty to stay. Pancho then started his long, lonely vigil, not knowing when it would end. He is not to question nor reason. Only to stay, stay and defend. Naturally, Poncho had no way of knowing when his partners would come back, or even if they ever would. But he settled right down to do his job just the same. Now that the people had gone, the old mine began coming back to life. The little spring underneath it was the only sweet water for miles around that didn't dry up in the hot season. And it brought all kinds of critters in from the desert, like these Coati Mundis. So the old pile of rotting timbers had gradually turned into a kind of high-class desert resort complete with swimming pools. The old tool shed, though, had been taken over by a whole family of sloths. They were Havelina, the fierce little wild pigs of the desert. Everybody always gave them plenty of room. Nobody knows quite how, but a horse can sense water for miles. 
and Patches had finally found his way to the old mine. Poncho was sure glad to see a friendly face. His orders hadn't said anything about guarding horses, but after all, Patches was part of the outfit. Bawati Mondays are a kind of desert version of the raccoon, with just as much of a reputation for curiosity and mischief. And all those shiny doodads in Sam's wagon were too much to resist. Before they were through, they got into everything, including a box of bandages Sam carried for square dances and local elections. Pancho showed Patches the corn and settled him down. Then, as soon as he was comfortable, it was back to the guard post. When the mine shut down and everybody pulled stakes, a pair of turkeys had got left behind, and by now there was a regular flock of Well, Pancho took the slack out of their rope in a hurry. about then that the wind started to come up. Didn't smell like rain, but it was sure fixing to do something. Probably a dust storm, what the old timers called Oklahoma rain. morning the storm was over and everybody took up where they'd left off the night before. There was one big change in the situation. The wind had wiped those wagon tracks clean. Kelso knew the general direction they'd been going though and he wasn't about to give up yet. Back at the mine, Poncho was still getting the last of those pesky turkeys out from underfoot. Well, that'd teach her not to mess around with his wagon. Kelso was about to give up hope of ever finding that trail again. Then his eye caught a flash of white. 
That old hen's costume didn't fit this wild country. Only place she could have come from was over the next hill. sensed he'd better lay low and let Kelso make the first move. Hello? Hello? Anybody here? My horse throwed me. I need help. Good. Looked like everybody was gone. Now to get the horses and hitch them up like he'd planned. Kelso thought he was about to make off with the richest haul of his long, miserable career. Then he saw the gunny sack kid. Kelso saw he'd been having a shootout with a sack of corn. He felt kind of foolish. Then he realized the horses were gone. And a saddle tramp without a horse is a lot worse than foolish. He's helpless. good even looking after the horses, much less chasing them. Well, at least there was still that little pinto back at the mine. But Kelso was going to have to wait his turn, because that cougar had patches on his mind too. Pancho knew there was no point in just sitting there in front of a man with a gun. Looked like a little strategy might be in order. When he saw the cougar coming from the other way, he was sure of it. Let's see now. There's a rifle on one side and a set of teeth on the other. Both of them after the pinto. Nothing to do but lead patches out from in between them.
too dark now to go back in there after a horse that was being guarded by a dog he couldn't even see. In the morning, though, things would look a whole lot different. Sam and Manuel had finally made it to a little nester's outfit and borrowed a team. But it was still a long ride back to the old mine. Maybe too long. Kelso's disposition had never been anything to write home about, and sleeping on those rocks sure hadn't improved it any. Somewhere down there was that all-important pinto. Kelso meant to catch him, right now. And if that dog got in his way, that'd be his tough luck. For Pancho, this was the day of the showdown. From inside the mine, he had all the advantage. He could keep track of Kelso without being seen and wait for the right opening. catch him unless he got rid of the dog first. The old mine was a regular rat's nest of ore shoots, passageways and sagging timbers, and Poncho knew every inch of it. Sooner or later, he'd have to fight, but in here there was no room to maneuver, so he ducked on out to wait for Kelso's next move. Judging by all the noise, there was a regular show going on in there. Poncho and Patches were sure interested, even though they couldn't see it. discovered he'd been stumbling around in there all alone, he really came out smoking. Then he saw he'd run across another good chance to corner the pento. setup Poncho had been waiting for. He got ready. 
got the gun back, Poncho's closest cover was the pig house. Of course, he couldn't stay in there, but he sure left those pigs in a sassy mood. Kelso's gun jammed, and he started using it like a stick. Poncho went for him again. The only way out from between all that ivory was up. Kelso knew a lot of tricks, but flying wasn't one of them. somehow, and the turkey tree was the only place left. Anyway, he didn't really have a whole lot of time to think about it. <laughs> Pancho had treed Kelso just like he would any other barman. And when the horse thief threw his only weapon and missed, it put him up that tree to stay. By evening, life around the mine had pretty well quieted down. The squirrels were heading for their nest. The old owl got set to go hunting. And of course, as always, the turkeys came back to roost in their tree. Sam and Manuel were making pretty good time, but they'd ridden all day and the horses could only do so much. It was time for everybody to settle down for the night. came up bright and hot. Kelso hadn't exactly had a restful night, and it looked like sleeping late was going to be out of the question. He wasn't going anywhere, though, and neither was Poncho. It was a standoff. The only question was, 
Who could hold out longest under the everlasting desert sun? After hour, Kelso watched Patch's every move. That aimless, wandering horse was so near, and yet so far. Of course, Poncho was suffering too, and that water hole looked better every minute. He just couldn't resist trying for one quick go. Right off, Kelso saw his chance to make one more try for the penalty. Those few mouthfuls of water did wonders for Poncho brought all his old pep and gumption right back. So Poncho had won another round, but Kelso had his knife back. And help was still a good ways off. By now, the turkeys had sort of taken to Kelso. The feeling wasn't exactly mutual. But anyway, they all roosted on together through another night. Next day, the sun came up hotter than ever. It was like a blacksmith's forge with a blower on it. desperate idea. Can't we hurry? Uh, we've still got a long way to go. If we run the horses in this heat, we're going to have to rest them, and that's going to take even longer. Pancho and Kelso had started out fighting over the horse and the wagon, but by now, they'd forgotten everything else. They were just fighting each other, and this time, it'd be to the finish. the rescue. When we first got in the wagon, 
to say you think of something before we get to our next settlement. Oh. Sure, I'll think of something. But it might take me years and years. Then our third name was listed among Western heroes. And here's how the record remains. Daniel Boone, Davy Crockett, and Poncho. A dog of the West Texas Plains. A dog of the West Texas Plains.